things that are simple for humans, such as social or motor skills, are difficult for robots. Things that are easy for robots, which is like large-scale calculations or large-scale data analysis, are very difficult for humans. In robotics, this is what we call the Moravec's paradox. This is because uh, motor and perception skills were developed in humans by millions of years of evolution. In contrast, uh, robots are able to perform these like quick computations instantly, and they are a simple task in general, but complex for us because of our limited capacity and memory. Atlas's perception system has to be dynamic because simply because we cannot predict the state of the world and how the world reacts to what we do with it. So imagine trying to find a remote in your living room with your kids and a dog running around. It, it's pretty much impossible. So being able to perceive these changing circumstances and adapt to it is key. Many of our viewers assume that uh, we can just replay a pre-recorded trajectory to make behaviors in our videos. In reality, though, um, small imperfections and small errors accumulate very quickly to make the what we think the, the state of the world is diverge from reality. Atlas perceives the world by using camera sensors. It estimates properties and facts about the world, such as the 3D geometry of the environment around it, where the objects are that we care about, and as well as what are the possible obstacles that could you know, get in our way. This is achieved by a combination of AI and classical systems that are basically you know, working together we think this kind of sequencing task is a really good fit for a humanoid robot like Atlas because it has the right blend of being just unstructured enough that you need the freedom and the power of a humanoid form factor to reach really low, reach really high, deal with a lot of environment variation. While at the same time, it is a pretty dull and pretty repetitive task that's both physically strenuous to do day in and day out. Solving this kind of task requires being able to do manipulation very reliably and for long periods of time without making too dramatic of failures. So for a lot of these uh, tasks that we have, the margins for success are very slim. For example, um, a lot of the fixtures that uh, the cells that we need to stow into have like margins about five centimeters. And uh, a centimeter here, a centimeter there can be uh, essentially grounds for failure. It's essentially impossible unless you have real-time perception running uh, because every time you carry something, um, it can slip in hand. Uh, every time you grasp something, you may not always get the best grasp. So instead, if we have something running in the loop real time that can help us adjust and adapt to these, um, that's where perception comes in. Not only are the objects themselves difficult to perceive, but the, the way that they're in the world is, is difficult for Atlas as well. They're not simply on a tabletop, they're often shoved into dark cubbies uh, that, with only a small sliver of the object actually visible to the robot. And when we go to grab those objects, Atlas often blocks the entire view itself with his arm. Uh, so we have to do a, a lot of uh, fun stuff to make it actually work. There might be instances where you see Atlas might shift the object in hand uh, as if to get a better glance at it. And if you tilt it up upwards, a bit of light shines on it and it works better. So to, in order to be uh, reactive to any movement of the dollies, either because they've been pushed or moved or not known precisely, uh, Atlas needs to uh, constantly update its belief about where those fixtures are in the environment. So one way we test that is by moving the fixtures on Atlas, by pushing the dolly when it's not looking or as it's turning around, and making sure that it can still update its belief correctly and get those objects into the right shelf. So picking from the floor is one of the most dramatic examples of a way we'd like the robot to be able to handle kind of a catastrophic failure. If the object has wound up on the floor, something has already gone kind of wrong. Uh, maybe the fixture wasn't exactly where we expected, so we bumped it when we were inserting the object in, and then also our grasp wasn't secure enough, so the object fell out of the hand. No matter what, we want to get that, that object off of the ground so that we don't trip over it or destroy it, and then go put it in some QA pile so that you know, we can deal with the object later. Our strategy for picking off the ground is a uh, instruction to the robot to reach your hand down to, to get your hands around it and pick it up. Uh, and the instructions are literally just put your hands roughly here relative to the, to the object, push them into the floor, curl the fingers, and push them together. And we rely on our pretty extensive control stack to figure out how to get the robot there, reliably get it over there, get it squatted all the way down with that crazy range of motion. And we rely on our perception system to know exactly where that object actually is. Currently, the biggest challenge for Atlas and other humanoids uh, on the market is adaptability. How many tasks can you 
perform with a single system. In order to do this, the robot needs to learn more fundamental truths about the world it operates in. And this is just a general trend that we're seeing in research and machine learning overall. So this is a shift from machine learning models trained on individual tasks or data sets towards big foundational models that are trained on large scale data sets that consists of multiple modalities such as video or pictures or language. Recently, the research is also going a bit further. So we're going past just perception and kind of understanding images and more towards uh, controlling the whole robot based on language and video inputs. This, this shift is basically a shift from spatial AI to physical intelligence.